the Netherlands is known for its agriculture, water management, horticulture, and many scenic nature reserves. But as urban areas intensify, nature inside cities deserves more value. And while rising sea levels and global warming dominate the climate change discussion, biodiversity is often overlooked. Dagmar Keim, project manager for the joint Amsterdam and Almira Pavilion, explains how this floriata display can bring humans and non-humans together in harmony. The theme here is the voice of urban nature. The voice of urban nature was introduced because the theme of the floriata is greening the city. And we are the city of Amsterdam at the city of Almere. We are want to green our city. It's about biodiversity. In the landscapes around the cities, we have such an intense agriculture that the biodiversity in this area is decreasing. Kaim would like urban dwellers to understand the importance of biodiversity within a city. Adding green is not only about adding aesthetic beauty, but creating spaces that allow people, animals, insects, and plants to thrive together. So we don't say that in the city of Amsterdam, we have 850,000 inhabitants and the city of the Palmyra 250,000 inhabitants, but we are trillions, we have trillions inhabitants because not only the people, but only also the nature is important. To build a pavilion that supports this idea, organizers were faced with more than a few challenges. The display had to be nature inclusive and circular, meaning the materials should be locally sourced, recyclable, and eventually biodegradable. And oh yeah, be built during a global pandemic. It was also the time of Corona when we developed the exhibition. So what we said was it needs to be positive. And when you come out, you feel like you know what you should do and not go away like, oh, the world is going under and we all will die. The pavilion also had to be modular and easily disassembled. The wall panels are made with hempcrete, a combination of burnt and ground oyster shells, hemp shivs, and red pigment from the matter plant. The wood beams were harvested for the maintenance of nature reserves or from demolition projects and blackened with linseed oil and carbon for a uniform look. Some of the signage was 3D printed from algae. All materials were sourced or grown within the Netherlands. Now we're inside the garden of the Voice of Urban Nature. The garden was done by Joost Emmerich, uh, which is a landscape designer, and Omkaideniers. Omkaideniers means, means no weeds. It's a philosophy that embraces wild plants instead of removing them for the sake of aesthetics. All plants can be a valuable part of the landscape. They made six different gardens with different seeds. Over there you have the garden of uh, circularity of death and living in which we show that one plant dies and another animal comes, or another plant comes. There's always a circle of life. So this garden is an expression of the circle of life. This is the garden in which we have, you cannot see it really anymore, but we have like tiles with different concrete elements. This is a garden where the plants come to pioneers' plants. The first plants that arrive in the city when we leave it, when we don't use the city, and which we usually say this is wheat. But here we said, okay, also come over wheat, you can make a very nice garden. A third garden is all about building materials, useful for people and animals. The idea is that nature is always using the landscape in its own way. Now is a moment that actually the animals are coming and, and taking the seeds out. And also the nature is going through this whole circle of the flowering and then drying and dying and then the seeds fall down. So that's why we leave it here. And in June, this was a very nice green garden. And right now, there's a lot of discussion about it, whether this is still beautiful or not. But we say, if we want to green the city in a way that is for people and for animals, we have to change our perception of nature. We have to change our attitude, but also our aesthetics. And now we are confronted with that change. Of the landscape trades team toured through the pavilion to discover two more ground level gardens. One of them featured plants that could feed human and non-human city residents. 
The fifth garden was all about plants used for healing. So up there we have the sixth garden, and that was a bigger discussion because we made a garden there that cost only money, but nobody can see it. And we said well, this is very important because one on one hand, we as a city of Amsterdam are near and we want to make a lot of this garden and make the whole the greening the city is also using the garden's roots, especially with the uh, intensifying city. But also because we think that it's very important that the city also make spots for the other living than us. They also need their homes where they be alone sometimes, where they can sleep, where they can have their own life with us, without us human being. So this is the sixth garden. And this is referring to a new a movement that is actually happening all over the world, and that is in the rights of nature. There is an the idea that nature should have also in the legal system the same rights as humans. So here we say we have the Universal Declaration of Human, and human has been crossed out and says everything that lives. There is a challenge to applying such a naturalized approach for every city. It requires a fundamental shift away from formal flower beds and neatly trimmed lawns, or at least it means finding a way to compromise for the sake of biodiversity. In the midst of the other cultivated displays at Floriata, the voice of Urban Nature Pavilion invites city dwellers to reconsider what nature and beauty means to them. I think you have to find a kind of a balance between uh, the movement, we're the transition of changing. And we see that also in the city of Amsterdam, we're changing our way we are treating plants. We only mow two times a year. And many people say, what's happened? The city doesn't do maintenance anymore. And this is horrible. And I cannot see anything. And that's purposely. But we, to do that and able to do that and make this, we need to take people with us along. And maybe this is a little bit too extreme right now. And it should do it more in steps. But I think it opens your eyes and it makes you think.